They never interpret things properly. Hey, Gilbert. Gilbert will help. Gilbert will help. He has a girlfriend. He knows women. You Gilbert just knows the ladies. Uh, yeah, I got to admit, he's got his girlfriend way in line. He really does, actually. <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert put on you the put that on backwards. The right way. Now. Yeah. You miss Gilbert scoffing down the free bagels. It, we had some free bagels out there. Gilbert thought he'd hit yes. gold. Not anymore. <laughs> you ate every one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he hadn't eaten in weeks. <laughs> he had too much, man. How you doing, man? Oh, great, great. I heard, who's the guy who jerks off on the plane? That's Richard Christie. And you know what he told me? He, he said also that Richard, Richard told me that not only did he love the video iPod, because the video iPod enables him to jerk off on an airplane to porn, but he also said they hit turbulence uh -huh. and he fell down while he was jerking <laughs> off. Uh, he, he was doing the logic out in the hallway with someone going, well, what if people shit? In the toilets, the air on planes. <laughs> and he goes, what would you rather have on your face? Oh, someone's shit or someone's cum? Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Humans don't have to come on a plane. Guys sometimes have to shit <laughs> yes. on a plane. That's the, that's the key. Like, like the, the, Come on. Oh, that's just, I mean, you can wait to jerk off. I'm the whole thing <laughs> on the plane. This is, this is exactly my contention. The planes weren't meant for everyone. <laughs> hey, Gary, did you get Beth on the phone? Put her up right now. I just spoke to her. He's going to put her right up. All right. What, what will I, Will? Will? I was, I got it. Hi, hon. Hi. First of all, um, we were talking. Uh, First Bobo, of all, Gilbert is here. Gilbert's yes. here. Hi, Gilbert. Hello. And Bobo was mentioning your FHM spread. Which oh, everybody you know what I want to ask Gilbert? Wonderful. Yeah. I was asked to do that um, paranormal show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's turned down the paranormal oh. show? <laughs> Gilbert that show's crazy. Gilbert will do anything. Yeah, exactly. I was can't that, wait to watch it. Was it really bad? Uh, let's, let's see. It's one of those things where they go... Hey, the temperature is about a quarter of a degree warmer in this side of the room, which <laughs> lets you know that someone died here. <laughs> and who else was on? What other celebrities were on there with you? That that was the other part. Oh, oh, um, Tracy Lords. Tracy oh, Lords. And yes. was Tracy Bingham on too? With the, the uh, not, not with me. No. no. Didn't Tracy Lords start freaking out and crying or something? I read like couldn't handle the ghosts. Or the, <laughs> there's supposed to be ghosts. <laughs> in the that was Tracy Bingham. Whoever was in here like, before and said like Tracy ghosts Bingham. are the weirdest thing that's happened Believe in her life. Yeah. Yeah. A big cock in her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when she was underage and she's worried about that. Um, yeah. When I did that paranormal show, it's like I agreed to do it, and then I'm like in the hotel, like about an hour before it was going to start. I was calling my agent, going, "Is there a way I can still get out of there?" <laughs> <laughs> what would they pay, like ten grand or something? Something like yeah. that. That was, was my like, offer. Just, yeah, and I just wanted to go home. Yeah, so you go I there, just, and, uh, and like you're supposed to be scared, but you weren't scared. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The, you're in the dark. Do uh, you feel um, uh, pressured to now have a reaction to the degree change? Oh, in the oh, yeah. It, it's like you're there, and the only thing scary is they have you in a dark room bumping into but that stuff. That would scare you know? me. Yeah. <laughs> But do they get mad you at you if you're not scared? Like, oh, do they oh, yeah, you to be yeah. scared? Do they say, listen, guys, give us a break? You better stay they, screaming. They show you this film of, like, supposedly this murderer got loose there, and he used to hide out in the catacombs and kill people. And, Bullshit! Like, yeah! <laughs> Did anybody get scared? For real? Was Tracy Lord scared? I, I think some people yeah. were scared, <laughs> and they could they could definitely feel activity in the room. Is yeah. Tracy yeah. Lord the, the Gene Simmons chick? No. no. Who's Tracy Lord's think? was the underage girl who did porno. Now she wants to be an actor. Who's Gene Simmons married, though? No, Shannon. Shannon, Shannon oh, I get them confused. Yeah, but, um, so Had I known that Gilbert would have been my partner, maybe I would have <laughs> No, you wouldn't have. I would have she would have asked for 50 grand. Beth would have been scared when the lights went out and Gilbert's and hands were all over. There is something creepy in here. That's a ghost. Like, like if they wanted to scare you, why don't they bring you like to the like like Compton or Harlem? Exactly. Stick around the <laughs> white people. Yeah, let you walk around there <laughs> with a hidden camera on you. And now they have one that Joe Piscopo I saw was what? one of was one of the ghost hunters. That's on scary. I thought you meant one of the ghosts. <laughs> Tune in Thursday night, Joe Piscopo, ghost hunter. <laughs> what? Uh, so, so you did it, and w did they say to you afterwards? Listen, you know, you weren't scared enough, and we can't have you back. <laughs> You're an asshole. Well, one of them. One of the girls at the end, she's going around with a mic going, well, you were scared. You felt active. And I said, no, I don't believe in ghosts. So you're and, edited right out. And she said, well, 
but you didn't want to go downstairs. And I said, I didn't want to go downstairs because it was dark and there's like <laughs> uh -huh. this rusty furniture and glass. <laughs> if he wants that, he'd go to his apartment. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, if there's no such thing as ghosts, who's Jennifer Love You at whispering to every yes. time? <laughs> Hey, so, hon, yeah. so I was showing the guys your FHM because Bobo was talking about it. My, my uh, girlfriend, Beth, is in FHM in various states of undress. By the way, Beth. Can uh, I get a free great. copy? The, yeah. the Beth, the layout's awesome. I thought you were going to say the article was awesome because I wrote it. Oh, I didn't read it yet, but I just saw the pictures. It's stunning. Uh, by the way, stunning. you're way better looking than Jerry Ryan's layout. Oh, stop it. Here she Stop is, it. It's not about that. Look at that. Oh. Not bad, huh? No. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can I get to why I'm calling in? Yeah. So what happened was... He's just telling you how it uh, how came, this up. came up. What does Jerry Ryan look like in person? I can't tell. No, but she, but she wasn't that hot. But I thought she was hot I at 7 of 9. I interviewed her once on the red carpet. She's yeah. very, very pretty. Yeah, when she was in that science fiction. She, she doesn't look yeah, good she without totally that hot. metal stuff on her face. Yeah, she looks good as a robot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, she's very, very beautiful. She's I'm only good. six hours of prosthetic makeup away from being hot. <laughs> We were talking about shaving, and I said that you kind of put your foot down, and you don't want to shave anymore. Well, that's where you're wrong. What do you mean? Because I had two, you're such a brat, two days of stubble because I've been so busy, and it's time-consuming, or you don't want to cut yourself. And last night, I finally had time to myself, and if you would have <laughs> I would have banged you. <laughs> you would have realized that oh, I was now, honey, as can be last night. I owe you an apology. But you really do. <laughs> I do. I love you. That, that's what was really crappy to wa be walking the dog and some guy come up to me and say, why did you sh stop shaving your pee for half <laughs> And I want to know he used the P word. The P? Oh, I didn't say it. I'm going to kick his ass. You know. Honey, I'm sorry. You're I, a brat. I thought you were putting, I thought you were saying to me that you were no longer ever going to shave no, again. No, I, I haven't had time. Well, why did you say that? You, don't, you didn't and tell me that. And it was just what I said. She could, if she did it too fast, she could nick herself. Oh. That's what I said. Well, Jessica Hahn says she doesn't care. She has to get down there and shave everything out. Oh, in, stop it. In five mm. years, have I... Have I not? Dis I mean, come on. You're right. I thought you were growing it out, and I was like... He was making a whole big thing, like you oh. were putting your foot down or nah, something. I didn't know. He had a whole thing going here. You were really disturbed by that. No, I mean, I, I was just like kind of like... like. Oh, stop it. You came in here and said, I think she's <laughs> trying to show me... I don't know what it meant. I mean, we didn't even have a discussion about it. And then when I tried to bring it up, she was like, I, I don't I don't want to shave. I, I, I but I thought it was forever. I thought, it was, I thought you were talking about forever. <laughs> And I was, I was well, did your girlfriend shave, Gilbert? Uh, I, yes, yeah, her face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, the vagina. Is it all the hair gone? Does she shave every day, her face? <laughs> you, is all the hair clean? Uh, not not all, no. no she has a little Hitler yeah, mustache? Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh, Just like, yes. to remind Gilbert, he's a Jew. Well, yes. I'm sure when somebody, yeah, if you hate Jew, look at the Hitler mustache. <laughs> My girlfriend shaves like Rex Marshall Goering down there. <laughs> Why, Dane is completely shaved, right? No, she does the, the strip. Marty says he likes that. Are they back together? It, yes. I yeah. can email Dana again? Yeah, good. I mean, she'd love to hear from me. I actually did. I emailed her a couple days ago. Whether I'm in her life or not, she'd love to hear from me. It's just so I weird. The super, the super hot chick wrote, wrote me a letter and said that she would have sex with me and Artie. And I'm spoken for an Artie. We can't even get a clear read on it. I just said I I was wow. I owned up as a gallant uh, boyfriend and said I can't have sex. You know, I think Artie forgets sometimes. So he starts this whole thing that he's gonna sleep with right. the girl, and then he realizes, oh, right, wait a minute, I did talk to Dan. So you're with your girlfriend? Yes. All right. My first love is the lady comedy. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I owe you an apology. You I am do, very sorry. All those guys that are out there not listening are now walking past me like I'm dirty and skanky and not. Oh, doing that. oh that's <laughs> Well, let me say on behalf. Not that I think that that's dirty and skanky for a girl to have hair down. Sure there, it is. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I said on the air today that wouldn't it be smart that when kids are born. They'd have be covered in hair, and as they mature, they lose the hair. And a mature woman would be completely because bald. it's crazy when babies are born. There's no hair down there. What and are you it, saying? I'm saying that it would be so much easier as, as the older you get, like with balding, as the woman matured, <laughs> she'd lose the hair. Yeah, down by there. Pu puberty, you'd be bald down right. there. You're the only person that that I know that is is not into no hair down there. Come on, stop it. I mean, come on. I mean, it's it's you gotta be you gotta be uh, uh, kidding me. And who likes wearing rubbers? He has a lot of odd things. Well, he's odd. 
Uh, that's what we're getting to here. <laughs> what do you want, Ralph? What could you add to this conversation? Hey, now. Hey, now. Beth. Ralph. What do you mean you don't have time to shave? You should always have time to shave for Howard. <laughs> Two <laughs> Ralph days. always does. I, I yeah. do. He does. <laughs> I, um, uh, I'm telling you, in, in the in the six and a half years that I've been with Howard, I think I've done I've had a pretty good run of keeping it nice and clean for him. So I'm well, just saying, two it, days went by where I just did not have the time. Tip of the iceberg. Right. Okay. This right. could be the beginning. Howard of the and I end. are actually doing better than ever for everyone. I am so in love with this woman. Yeah, we're just really doing better you, than ever. So. Yeah, you guys are kind of sickening. <laughs> yeah, we really, Ralph. You see, we're in love. Oh my God. Yeah, we're in love. It's crazy. Gilbert, are you in love? I uh, oh, sure. Yes. <laughs> are you? Have in you has anybody observed? Gilbert? Oh, I saw him years ago with that girlfriend. <laughs> then he broke up with her. Then he's back. With her. I don't know what's going on. Gilbert's in love with the free bagels. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you're capable of experiencing love for a woman? Uh, no. Uh-huh. <laughs> no. Do you know what I, I just remembered? Uh, I remember seeing an actress in a movie who was very hot and she was shaved and everything. Then I met the director and he like killed everything for oh. me because he said, oh yeah, she was shaving every day for the movie and it's like she started to get razor bumps and ingrown hair. Oh. Beth doesn't get that. Beth doesn't yeah. get that. <laughs> very careful. And there. I thought it just killed the entire movie. What, what movie was this? <laughs> this was a science fiction film. <laughs> Honey, why would you... About a female vampire. It was Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, honey, why would you in FHM show your whole ass, but when I go to look at it, I'm not allowed? Those are good pictures. There's like 50 of them. Thank no, you, Ralph. They are very good. Well, I know my angles when I stand stationary. I don't want to walk with jiggling ass in front of you. <laughs> oh, God. Ankles. Ankles? Oh, no, I said you're busy, but you're worried about your ankles? No, ankles. Angle. You're bit worried about your ankles? <laughs> <laughs> All right, honey, it was a big misunderstanding. I didn't check you last night. I didn't realize you were yeah, shaved. Yeah, you would have been in for a nice surprise had you been oh, interested in me, in me and not your chess game. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Howard, what's going on? I love chess. He's obsessed with chess. I'm obsessed with it. Obsessed. I Beth, suck at it, but I, but I, I love it. Beth, I hope uh, as a, as a good you know favorite or the fan on the street, you showed him that in fact you did shave. Yeah, you let him exactly. I let him feel. Yeah. You should dress up as a rook, Beth. And uh, maybe you can get his attention. I love this woman. Sex has never been better, number one. Yeah. True. If I, if I may say. How many times a week? I don't think it's a matter of that. It's a matter of how good is it when it when it happens. I was asking Howard. Multiple uh, times. Yeah. I'm, I mean, not as much as when we first met. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Right, hon? That's the uh, first sign. Definitely not, but it's it's more amazing than we first met. Yes, that is true. Yeah, like I said, we're the best that we've ever been. Is it quick, or do you guys go for like half an hour, an hour? No, we go pretty long. Yeah. Enough, enough so that the job gets well, done. Well, yeah, they, the the results show is almost over. By the time. Yeah, it's true. We bang mostly during the Dancing with the Stars results show. How long is the t Actually, no. Honey, I, I love you. I am more sexually attracted to you than I ever have been. Thank you. I think that you are <laughs> beautiful. Mm-hmm. Your personality is better than ever. Thank you. And I love you. Well, I love you, too. And, Beth, you're great. Thank you. Too. I'm taking your dog to the vet now because of her limp. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My dog How is limping. Bianca? Yep. Bianca's all right. Her breath is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> she limps. And she oh, farts a lot. She limps? Yeah, she's she's kind of like me. No. Yeah. How can you tell she's limping? She's I mean, not she... doing very well at all. Really? She, yeah, she's limping terribly. Her front right paw. So I'm going to get an x-ray oh, today. Oh, dear. No. Yeah. I think I she's, she's heavy. All right. I think we feed her too much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think she's getting heavy. Big potato. Yeah. All right, all right, thank you. All right, bye. Honey, I love you, and, and give me a report as soon as you know. I love I you, too. Bye. Bye. Jackie Onassis was ex- incredibly hairy. Have <laughs> you had her? sex with her? <laughs> uh, yes. He's right. I remember yeah. they took these nude the pictures brush, of yeah. her. 
And, you know, like somebody took from like yeah. an aerial photograph or something, and she had a big, thick bush. But that, you it know. It looked like she had, uh. I thought she had underwear on. The the first time. She looked like. Between her legs. She looked like during the Cuban Missile Crisis, she had been having an affair with Castro. <laughs> and his beard became glued on there. He got stuck. <laughs> yeah, he got stuck on there. But you're right, I do remember that. You know, it's always shocking to see the big bush. I, I first started, the first jerk off material I had was I found the nudist magazine on the streets of Rosa. Oh yeah, not a, not like a playbook. A no, nudist. I remember those news. <laughs> and it was like naked women playing soccer and stuff, and yeah. all of them had big thick bushes, like they were into the natural look. But they also had hair under their hair arms, under their arms, and, and, and I was just like, oh Hairy my legs. god! Ugh. And they used to call those magazines like health and fitness magazines. You yeah, know the I mean? first the first woman I ever saw nude was my mom. I caught her coming out of the shower. <laughs> Did you get turned on? And she never, ever shaved. What a bush on that woman. My poor old man. It was unbelievable. A bush a mile wide and long. And, uh, I you went. Know, but it's gotten to be like breasts now. Men don't know what real breasts look like and anymore. And my mom had the biggest titties. And they, were. they don't know what a real bush would be like. Like, I'd never seen a real woman before, and then there's big titties and big, thick bush. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> That's a lot to handle. This generation doesn't know what real tits look like, and the no, old generation no. never knew what a pussy looked like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I once said to my mom, you know, years later, I said, do you ever think of shaving? She goes, no. A, woman's, a woman should be natural. <laughs> No. 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 And there are some no. girls now who no. call that going retro. And yeah. so they give up shaving or waxing and they say, oh, I'm retro. Yeah, well, I'll give up wiping yes. after I shit. How's that? <laughs> You're retro. You you like, I'm retro. It ain't going retro. It's going single, no, honey. I'm going caveman, okay? I'm going to take a big dump and it's going to... That's gonna, how retro I'm going. I'm going to wipe with my hands and I'm going to have sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> retro. <laughs> I'm going to wipe my shit on my face like I'm in a menstrual show. <laughs> I remember National Lampoon. What? what? <laughs> oh, God, come on, man. What is wrong with you? Well, you know, wow. sometimes on satellite I go too far. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, crazy. Yeah, that is, man. <laughs> Maybe you're just being a little oversensitive. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Steve Langford and John Hine have updates. Here's crazy. what's going on yeah. in the Howard okay. 100 Newsroom. Gilbert Gottfried is here this Wednesday night at 7.30 and November 30th at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan. And to purchase Gilbert's DVD, Dirty Jokes, you got to get the DVD. Go to GilbertGottfried.com, GilbertGottfried.com, where it all goes on. Steve Langford, what's going on in the Howard 100 Newsroom? Uh, oh, excuse me. Just some of the stories we're working on in the Howard 100 newsroom. Andrew Dice Clay, live and alive, after a virtual mauling by 1,800 barking mad fans. All of this heard live on Howard 101 Saturday night. One man in the crowd thrown out after approaching the stage, pulling out his shortcoming and wagging it at Dice. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Howard 100 News has exclusive backstage sound of the Dice Man reacting to this madness, telling us he's ecstatic about how his live show went and grateful to Howard Stern and Sirius for making the stand-up appearance happen and available to fans live around the world on Howard 101. Thank you, Steve Langford. Well, I think he has more. Oh, then he no. to me. Just, just do it. <laughs> you know, he just had it. one story. Yeah. Yes. The sweet sounds of Sirius floating in the air at Wendy's. The fast food chain signing a deal to air a select number of commercial-free music channels from Sirius and most of Wendy's company-owned stores. Nice. That's great. You know who should appear? Uh, should have appeared with Artie Dice Godfried. <laughs> <laughs> oh! What <laughs> <laughs> you a homo? <laughs> you had a very big career for a while as Dice Godfrey. Yes. <laughs> you, had, you, had give, you felt when Dice was popular, perhaps you should change your name to Dice Godfrey. Hey, get right, Dick, get right, Doc. Oh. <laughs> I was in bed with this girl. <laughs> <laughs> I did <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you were a little bit jealous, Dice Godfrey, of uh, Andrew Dice Clay and his act and his success and his millions. Was that what was going on? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill. Ow! <laughs> How does Dice Gottfried feel about Retro Bush? Oh, I don't like Retro Bush! Oh! 
Oh! Humpty Dumpty shaves his bush! Oh! What you gonna bush what are you a homo? Oh! Oh, you are such a talent. Ty Scott, thank you. Uh, anything else, Steve? I think that hurts him. Yeah. A wild week of shows coming up on Howard 101 tonight. Now you have to say it as dice. <laughs> oh, forget it. Okay. Bad chance. <laughs> Tonight, inside the Porn Actors Studio, 7 p.m. Eastern. An Andy Dick shit show at Midnight Live, Tuesday. Wow. Jackie Martling's Joke Hunt, 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. And Riley Martin at Midnight. Wednesday, Andrew Dice Clay at Midnight Eastern. An encore performance of the live stand-up appearance in New Hampshire. Howard 101 this week. These stories and much more coming up on the Howard 100 Noontime oh. News Weekdays. Oh. New Eastern updates every year. <laughs> yeah. A shit show! Oh. <laughs> you like that, huh? Shit show. <laughs> A good name, right? Jack and Jill are taking a shit out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go over to John Hine. Thank you, Steve, in the Howard 100 Newsroom. Let's go over to John Hine, who hosts the wrap-up show every day. Debbie Davids would do anything to be on the show, and Artie was willing to start a fight with Dana to get some action. <laughs> We're going to take calls on why Fred seems to be ignored when these offers come up, if Artie has now changed his mind after the conversation, and what or who Debbie should have to do once she's in here. Also, the reviews are in on the Saturday Night Dice Artie show, and they're mixed to say the least. We're going to talk about what went down Saturday night, if the crowd was ever on Dice's side, and the future of the oh, Artie Dice oh. Stadium Tour. The and Stadium Tour. The Stadium Tour, yes. Right. And Jack what... and Jill went up the hill, now Jack has chlamydia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and last but not least, Grandma Caprio chimed in often on today's show, but did the last time get too personal? What are you talking about, the John Hyde? <laughs> <laughs> I told Artie to fuck with that girl. <laughs> We're going to talk about what it takes to reach your breaking point on the show, and if Artie wants to hear any more from his grandma. With grandma what Caprio? Did he say? The what last did he say? one, Artie definitely reacted. Are you serious? Really? Well, I'm not near a breaking point. I was. <laughs> Artie, was I bad with Grandma oh, Caprio? No, I don't, I don't think know. I was out of line. I think John is starting up some trouble. He's just looking <laughs> for stuff. I just want to see my Artie happy. <laughs> what did she turn into just now? A Japanese. <laughs> He's done eight different accents for her. That's offensive. I told my Artie to marry Dane. I think John is shying away from what his, what his story Dana should have been. Dane is a school teacher. And she is a good girl, not like those fucking whores that sell him heroin. I think John should have been, uh, today Howard claimed that Beth refuses to shave her bush. A woman on the street said, Beth, shave your pee for Howard. We'll examine about Howard. <laughs> I think the pussy story was a bigger story. That was, no, I, I do, too. That was my fourth topic, but thanks, Artie. No, when you, <laughs> when you started talking about Ga Grandma Caprio having sex and whatnot, that's when Artie thought, got oh, a little... Uh, he oh, he oh, puts that on. Grandma too. Caprio shaves a pussy out! <laughs> <laughs> when, Dice, when Dice Godfrey does it, it's not... It's okay. <laughs> It's not offensive. Well, we'll be talking about all that this stuff. Is on the... Scott, we just got to have a mental asylum. <laughs> we'll be talking about all that on the wrap-up show after this show. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny Hine, and we really appreciate the update, and we'll see you at 11 o'clock. Uh, let's go over to Robin Quivers in our newsroom, who has the news. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Where's, uh, so let's see. Uh, um, what? I should play this for you. This is, this is, I think this one's over the top. What's this? Richard just wrote a song about jacking off on your titties. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Tell me what you think. No, that's from Andy Williams. <laughs> I'd like to jack off and shoot my load on Robin's titties. <laughs> I'll do it really quickly. You don't even have to leave your booth. Oh, Howard, please let me jack off and shoot my load on Robin's I like that he's asking my permission uh, to jack off on your face. Like, I have a say in it. Oh, Howard, please let me jack off on your face. Oh, all right. go ahead and jack off on your face. Uh, there's your uh, news intro, Robin. Thank you very much. Now, I want you to play, pay, uh, pay close attention to all this right. uh, next story. A completely naked man who was wandering on the sidewalk oh. was arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Oh, I, I read about this. El this Cerrito, California police say that the suspect told us he had a tool in his butt. 
<laughs> we removed a six-inch metal wood carving tool wrapped in black electrical tape from his ass. At the time of his arrest, 33-year-old John Sheehan was lying down on a huge tree stump, pleasuring himself. The wood carving tool, an owl, was in his backside. An owl? And that was part of the fun. An owl? Oh, you can arrest a guy for carrying an owl in his ass? Yes, it's considered a weapon. Oh, I didn't know that. That's he has a, a thing weapon. for combining pain and pleasure, and so that's uh, why he took this thing, wrapped it in electrical tape, shoved it up his butt, and then started to jerk off <laughs> on a tree stump. <laughs> Sounds like fun. So uh, now they say he'll probably get a lot of pleasure and pain while he's doing his time. How old a guy? Did they say? 33. Mm. Had his whole life ahead of him. <laughs> hey, Artie, what, what? your concert's Thursday, right? Yes. Uh, yes. I'm planning on going, but don't I need a ticket or something? I was just asking him that. Yeah, you're, you're all on a list. It's, oh. uh, it'll what work out. What time is that concert? I don't even know. I don't know either. You'd have to, I think it's 8 o'clock. No, well, I mean, can we find out? I'm, Howard, I'm going to take care of it, get all the information for everybody right. by tomorrow. Yeah, it's all, you just, you're on a list. So, yeah, you, Artie, you, on a list. Believe, you just got to walk in. It's, you know, Artie's like, playing <laughs> Carnegie Hall. <laughs> oh, he finally made it. What do you think this, of that? this is so offensive. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> is this going to throw Gilbert into another depression? Why, why don't you just stick the knife in my heart now? <laughs> <laughs> Will you be calling Artie for advice? On yeah. How to play you Carnegie played Carnegie. Hall? You haven't well, you, I so you when you work Carnegie <laughs> Hall, it's important to walk out on the stage <laughs> and you face the audience. <laughs> and then you have jokes that you tell to the audience. <laughs> and if they laugh at the jokes, that means that the jokes are doing well <laughs> with the audience. Are you going to his show or you won't even attend? I, I, I don't know if I'll live. <laughs> Do you get jealous of Artie's success? I, I get in, yeah. incensed. <laughs> In his DVD, his DVD sold millions of copies, and, and you're still waiting to sell a copy. It, it like outsold uh, Sergeant Pepper. <laughs> and, uh, wow. uh, see Gilbert Gottfried wow. this Wednesday night at 7:30, November 30th at Caroline's on Broadway, Manhattan, and to purchase it's Gilbert's like DVD. It's worth living right now for Gilbert. How could you go on? And, uh, you know what's so funny? You want to? You, you know how GilbertGottfried.com. You know our DVD friend Gilbert. Sam Simon, who we all love, but he <laughs> Sam can sometimes say like a real arrogant thing that might knock your mood down a couple right. of pegs. <laughs> no. So when he first when he first heard about Carnegie Hall, he came up to me. I swear to God, this sentence came out of his mouth. He goes, he goes hey, I heard you're playing Carnegie Hall. I go, yeah. I go, yeah, it's pretty cool. He goes, you know, they mostly have shit there now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's like when I was getting sued, he wrote me an email and he goes, I just want you to know I feel terrible for what's going on. You know, most people, even when they're in the right, they lose their lawsuits. Wow. Oh, okay. You know, and it's just like, I, I, I don't think he means any harm. I mean, I know he doesn't, no, but that I I was so funny that that came out of his wow. mouth. All right, so we're on top. Are you going to the concert, Robin, or are you yes, can't attend? Yes, oh, you're no, going. No, no, no. I was just asking our Now, you're all invited, Fred. Yeah, yeah. Beth asked me, she goes, do we have to get dressed up because it's Carnegie Hall? I go, I can't imagine Artie's concert. We'll be dressed He's already. Not dress. yeah, First I mean, of all, you don't know what I'm going through with this fucking roast for Mario. Uh, Gilbert, are you doing this Mario Batali roast thing? Uh, no, I've even l left out on that one. <laughs> well, <That's> good. <laughs> good for you. Wow. Now, the last oh, minute. Right. You're on that Supernatural show. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the last minute, it's In a your dress. Face. <laughs> it's a dress code, the last minute. Oh. I gotta wear a suit. I have no suit close to fitting me. Yeah, he got very heavy. I don't know if you noticed. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I gotta no. fucking find a suit now. Lately, you're letting your body fall apart. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you're on a roll. I gotta buy a suit for this fucking thing now. I, I mean, I don't, I don't Are think... you gonna wear a suit to the Carnegie Hall? No, you? not no, a suit. No. no. What do you I'm going to wear pants <laughs> and a shirt. <laughs> now, I wear shoes because there could be like a sharp object on the floor or the stage is cold. So, in that way, it's important to wear shoes. Why'd you go naked with a carved owl up your ass? <laughs> uh, Robin, what else is in the news? Well, you know how they, uh, and Artie, you've heard this before. You're going to eat yourself to death? Yes. Yeah. Well, somebody has actually managed to do it. 
Um, there's a case report. He got the idea from me. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my first bits. <laughs> he stole that. <laughs> a 22-year-old woman who died after an eating binge underscores the rare and serious consequences of bulimia nervosa. <laughs> they say that I guess she was undiagnosed as having this disorder. She was of normal weight, and she arrived at the hospital with an extremely painful, distended abdomen. She had overeaten to the point that her other organs were crushed, and she died in the emergency room. That's happened to me, I think. <laughs> but what a way to go. Been, after, like, Peter Luger's one night, you yeah. feel like that's going to... Distended stomach? Absolutely. Yeah, but it's not crushing your other organs. You still left a little room for them, haven't you? <laughs> I don't what know. else is in the news, Robin? Jeez. <laughs> then, of course, there's the story this weekend of the actress. She was a young... Nice well, she was that, yeah. in her 40s, I guess, now. But she had done a couple of movies. She's from Long Island originally, living in New York. And uh, they found her hanging yes. in this office. Uh, <laughs> the, you know, initial thought is that she committed suicide, but her husband and her mother are saying she was not suicidal, so there is an investigation going on. The actress was Adrienne Shelley. She was best known for the movie Trust, but she was also uh, recently, I forget, but she was in one of those, uh, I forget, but some big movie that just happened not too long ago. She hadn't worked a lot lately, but... Uh, taking time to raise her child, and everybody thought she was having a nice day. The last person who talked to her talked to her about Halloween. She seemed fine, but uh, her husband found her at 6 o'clock swinging from the um, shower curtain rail. Mm. She was in Artie's last film. Oh. <laughs> that was the big one she was in. Uh, sorry, I don't have the filmography of Paul Newman over here. Email, uh, a lot of people love Artie. I love Artie's impression of John Hine giving the preview of the wrap-up show. Artie is so entertaining and does a great impression. And then following Artie, it's fun to hear John give the actual preview. Great show. Thank you. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, another guy wrote in. Artie and John uh, switching roles today in the show is one of the funniest things I've heard on Sirius. So that's good. you got to keep that up there, Artie. Yeah, I just didn't understand how John was being Artie. I didn't get that whole thing. Yeah, he was trying to fucking give me shit about the fact that I might have done heroin at some point. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's nothing to laugh at. How dare he? Yeah, is that anything to joke about? On a show this sensitive. When a 39-year-old man starts doing heroin, I think that's pretty serious. Yeah, I was 38. But... You know, it's really funny. It, when you tell people that Artie... You know, somehow it comes up in conversation. How does that happen? Oh. Who are you telling? Everyone. Yeah. No, Mr. X and I were having a conversation. Yeah. Well, hello there. Ah. Yes, Mr. X. I love these conversations. <laughs> What's the that, Mr. X? <laughs> I love them big words you be using. Ah. And what, was the, uh, what was the conversation? I don't know. And somehow Artie's name came out. Yeah. Why she uses words with more than two syllables? <laughs> and I he must have she known. She must be educated. Oh, stop oh. it! I thought he must have known that Artie, you know, the whole deal about Artie and the heroin, because yeah. he said something to me like, "How is Artie doing?" Right. And I said, "Well, he's fine. He's been off the heroin for seven." Who months. is how did do this? Now, that is the exact <laughs> conversation. Now, what are you talking to me? No. Who is how did do this? That's the exact how did do this? It's a cute little puppy. With, with records on it that you to be on my television set. That's the exact. That's, uh, <laughs> oh, right. oh That's the exact conversation I have with my daughter. She right. was saying, "How is Artie?" Like referring to the Dana right. breakup, to the uh, to the cocaine, yeah. drink, to the, the two drinking, million other negative the obesity. <laughs> and I go, "Oh, he's doing much better. He's not on heroin anymore." And she goes, "What?" Right. It's like you hit them in the stomach no, or something. No, most people don't know about because it. the look on their faces is like, "What?" Yeah. What? What did you? Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, here's a great news story. Artie I, did uh, heroin? I don't know if you guys caught this one. <laughs> I, got a, 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 I got an email from a guy who says, uh, he, this is press release, that he's suing his gym because he grunts a lot. He's a New York correctional officer. What? He, you know how some guys at the gym grunt? Yeah, yeah. they make a loud noise while they're lifting. Yeah, and you know, I know what this is, because I know, like, I make some noise if I go to a gym or something, but there are guys in my gym once in a while who are like, oh! <laughs> sound like that minister who you had on who's healing, uh, and he's like, go! Uh, 
They sound oh, like uh, they sound like Richard Kirkley when he's fucking Steve the intern in the yeah, sheet. It's like a little bit too much, you know what I mean? Right. It's like a little bit too much. Unnecessary yeah, is what it is. Exactly, yeah. I had a, a very uncomfortable conversation or experience because I dealt with this about four or five years ago. There was a guy in my gym. It sounded like prison rape. Right. He was an older guy, and I talked about it on the air, and he must have listened to the show because then after that, every time I came in, he looked at me so fucking angry. But it was like, it was ridiculous. Like the whole gym was like, ah! You know, call this guy for tomorrow's show. Okay. This will be good. And I'll tell you, when, <laughs> when, when I was, Dude, could somebody look at me more? You know? When I was in prison, sometimes when the guys got raped, they made too much noise. They're like, look at me. Look at me. That's understandable. Let's go to John. John, you're on the air. And uh, welcome to the show in Boston, Massachusetts. Go ahead, John. Hey, what's up? Hey. <laughs> Anyway, we're lifting in here. Hey, what's up, Desperado? Oh. <laughs> I had a question. Uh, oh. oh, my muscles feel better. Much better now. Oh. I look good. When is Robin's fat punch show going to hear? Robin's what? Oh. I'm working on my abs. Don't oh. mind me. With Jackie's joke card? Oh. Fred, I can't hear. What? Right. What? Uh, uh, Robin Show, Fat Cunt. That uh, sounded... oh, come on. <laughs> That's terrible, John. I don't like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you have a hidden mic at our development meeting? <laughs> hey, listen, hey, Adi, uh, I got to know. Where can I score some heroin? Ah, <laughs> well, you're in Boston, obviously. Right across from the right across from the garden, there's a guy named Louie. That's where you got started, right? Right, exactly. You got started. Right by the Fleet Center. All right, thank you, sir. Hey, man. I love these guys. Take it easy. <laughs> From Boston, that's Ted Kennedy country. Era. 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 Era my, my megaphone isn't working again. Era. 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 Oh, jeez. I think the batteries are still loose. Era. Era. Oh, oh there it goes. Era. Oh. oh. No Ted Kennedy today. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, fat, <laughs> fat cunt is the name of the last whore I killed. Uh, 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 Era, oh. <laughs> is that Dice a, Kennedy. Kennedy yes. Dice Godfrey. <laughs> hey, Kerea, Dickeria, Duck. Uh, I drowned a girl off the side of a bridge. Oh. <laughs> what else you got in the news there, Rob? Well, there's a lot of outing going on lately. Did you see that Doogie Howser? Uh, Dickery, Dickery, I drove off a dock. Neil Patrick Harris had to announce this I is the best news I've ever heard. Yeah. Because people were speculating that he was embarrassed about his gay lifestyle. Doogie Hauser. It was well known. <laughs> He's a fag. It was well known that he was gay. Him the world and Lance is in Bass. shock yeah, right. that Doogie Hauser is gay. Well, somebody asked me today, will this affect how you view how I met your mother? <laughs> And I yeah, said, but that wasn't the joke. Yeah. I said, no, it won't affect it at all. The show's gay, I'm gay, don't worry about well, it. Well, I hope they don't do something stupid like think now he has to come out of the closet on the show. No, no, that'll never work. What about Doogie Howser? It affects how I watch those reruns now. <laughs> Although, it, you know, I knew he was gay. I mean, it was, it was kind of always reported in the tabloids that he was gay. So it came as no surprise, but sometimes when I'm watching that show and he plays a womanizer, I go, he's gay. I love when people say, how did you know he was gay? I don't know, because he sounds and looks unbelievably gay. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't think he looked, really? sounded unbelievably no. gay. It, it's kind of like when Ellen DeGeneres and Rosie O'Donnell came out. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it, it's like we knew. Yeah. <laughs> well, he just thought he'd uh, just put any... Possible speculation. See, now I'm going to enjoy that show. Yeah. <laughs> Sir Paul McCartney. <laughs> it's funnier when you picture him getting it in the ass. <laughs> Sir Paul made his first statements about the difficulties in his personal life right now. He nah, music... it kind of sucked, though. He didn't slam the bitch. M nah. Music has the helped The one-legged bitch. And he has taken the high road, as as you might guess. Life goes on. He doesn't hold a grudge. He has no animosity toward anyone. He'd just like to get through this. He feels that he has pain just like everybody else. And uh, it would be stupid to, you know, get down and dirty with this thing. But I did read something this weekend that caused me pain for him. Six years ago, England changed their divorce laws. Oh, no. 
It used to be that in a divorce settlement, all you got was what you needed to live on. Yeah. And six years ago, they changed it so that everything comes into play. Mm. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and she has gotten Princess Diana's lawyer. Ever drown her. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody fix my megaphone? <laughs> She's got one leg. Drown the bitch. Ever drown her quickly. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll give her a ride home. <laughs> First give her a dirty blumpkin, then drown her. See, I don't like this megaphone. And, uh, that's I, the other one? It's the other one that, that's oh. funny. <laughs> Ever do a Robert Blake on her. Take it to the Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and there's on the street light. <laughs> Ever, uh, uh, wait, Ever, uh, it works. Oh. It's working, it's working. I bang on it. You fixed it. Ever, uh, take away her wooden leg first, and when she tries to float, she'll drown. Yeah. <laughs> Throw her in the river and say, if you think I was fucking you before, you're really fucked now. <laughs> When I, when I drowned, Mary Jo Kopechny, uh, era, that was a mistake. Era, era, uh, I made an error. Mm. But uh, if I was Paul McCartney, Sam Paul McCartney, I would uh, kill her. Yeah. <laughs> Short and sweet. Kill her. Uh, yeah, uh, get her John Lennon's bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of times I would hang around with these sluts in a bar. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, my nephew and I would go to our bar and pick up sluts. And uh, a lot of these girls are uh, 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 dirty girls uh, who only want to see a United States Senator come to some sort of shame. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's not cool. Well. My nephew had the family curse of an enormous red head. <laughs> And he could only get laid at Obar. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm sick and tired of these girls. <laughs> Paul did uh, debut. Oh, you yeah, like to grunt in the gym. Ow! Ow! <laughs> there, uh, there was a, a girl at my gym who grunted. Uh, we killed her. Yeah. <laughs> we drowned her. Oh, yeah. We uh, accidentally uh, drowned her. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Paul was at the Royal Albert Hall for the premiere of this classical piece of music he wrote. Most whores can't swim. And he did say it took him ten years to write it, and it was for his dead wife, Linda. That's uh, the inspiration. That other dead Mary, bitch. Mary Jo would have been uh, 50 years old had she lived, had she not met a horrible death. Had I not held her head underwater when she was trying to swim out. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, tried to save her. She'll never know the misery of aging. <laughs> 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 also this uh, weekend Pay no attention Saddam, to this brick I'm tying to your ankle <laughs> Saddam Hussein was I'm heading. very sorry uh, my side of the car was open And your side was closed Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to talk over this Alright right, let's go come on let's go. <laughs> what, what, what rough luck for you <laughs> All right, let's take a, talk loud I'll enough. take a break, and then oh, I'll get these guys under control. <laughs> We're on the Very side much. of the car being flooded with water. <laughs> if you want to quiet them down, just do a plug. See yeah, Gilbert yeah. Godfrey this Wednesday uh, night at 7.30 and November 30th oh, at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan. Now. Yeah, and you purchase Gilbert's DVD, Dirty Jokes, go to GilbertGodfrey.com. Here's a quick word, then we'll finish up the news, and you know what the rest of it. Join the revolution. It is criminal. To teach a man not to defend himself when he is the constant victim of brutal attack. You're listening to the Howard Stern Show. All right, what let's get back news? to Robin. Robin, we are here in the news. Gilbert Gottfried joins us. GilbertGottfried.com to get his DVD. Don't forget, this Wednesday night at 7.30 and November 30th at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan, Gilbert Gottfried, a, a small opportunity. A small window of opportunity exists to see Gilbert. To see a legend. A legend. Yeah. The and legend I'll, is alive. will be coming up in McCurdy's in Sarasota, Florida, 17th through 19th, and Catch a Rising Star in Rhode Island. Oh, it's you the know, respectability of my career. Is you should give amazing. those plugs to Howard. You should. Yes, yeah. Yeah. you shouldn't dirty yourself. Or yeah, you yeah. I just wanted to spit those out very All quickly. Right. I'm glad you did. Yes. I'm sure I'm everybody's sure. rushing to the phone. Yeah, and right now they're writing it down. Yeah, nobody's taking listening. notes. To meet you in person is really something. Uh, take yes. it from me. <laughs> 
All right, let's uh, go back to Robin. Robin, I'm what's up? I'm sure the... all of us will be You're sending... Tight vagina. Sending our condolences to Chris and Malak Rock who have announced that they're getting a divorce. Well, there's a shock. I saw that come. I mean, the last last two HBO specials, the last half hour, is him just yelling at women and his wife. i got to have Chris Rock on the show so I can tell you my Chris Rock story. Oh, yeah. Chris Rock split up? Yeah. Yes. What are you doing, Gilbert? Okay. You just said that. I'm no, I, I didn't hear this at all, but you want to know something? This is fascinating. <laughs> yes? When, when Eddie Murphy split up with his wife, somebody said to me, goes, how, how much me. you want to... Yeah. I okay. said it. All right. Was it him? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It How was much someone, you want to bet? It what? was someone on the radio. Oh. It was me. Yes. Yes. No, no. That, that's... I told you Chris Rock would divorce his wife. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yes. 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 Yes, I told yes. you. Why no, is that... I, that's so great. <laughs> oh, great. I love it. I love it because Chris Rock was another one of those people who... Underneath it all, he gave that kind of preacher-like thing of, but deep down, he loves his wife. No, he didn't. You got the wrong guy. Yeah, and he's loyal to her. <laughs> but you got to stay married. That was part of the bit, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, well uh, they say there's no accident that he's separating now. In California, any marriage that lasts more than 10 years is considered long-term. A judge could order him to pay alimony for the rest of his life. <laughs> and they're two weeks from from their 10th anniversary. You know what? It's worth it. By getting us now, it's short term, and he'll probably only have to pay five years of alimony. Oh, I so love this. That's, they say, why he decided it's time now does, does he have to kids? bail. Yeah, he has a couple of kids. Oh, excellent. You don't like Chris Rock? Uh, no, I do like Chris Rock. Are you jealous Rock. of him, too? No, I like Chris Rock, but I just I think it's so much fun to watch him get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> you will never get married. Just sit back and really enjoy this one. You, I, you will never get married, right? You would never share your empire I, with I might, might marry Chris Rock's wife. Yeah, she's got a lot of money yeah. out here. For five years, she'll be in the money. Yeah. She's I, an attractive woman, I'll tell you that. I thought he was a, a New York guy. He's married in California. I thought they lived on the East Coast. I thought so, too, but it, I, I was just reading this story. And, you know, he's been out on the West Coast for a long time. He has a new movie. Movie coming out called I Think I Love My Wife. I think mm. that's oh, excellent. I, that's the title of the movie. <laughs> oh, it's all publicity. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? Is it one and done for Rosie O'Donnell? They keep saying that Rosie is not happy at the view. Well, of course not. She is used to carrying her own show. Now she's sitting there with those yentas cackling over everything she says. And she says, uh, they say she hates biting her tongue. You know, they of course. corralled her. She the only thing she hates say... biting. <laughs> They can't, she can't say the controversial things that pop into her head because of the restrictions. And on also, the show. people debate every minute. Anything you say, they're debating and talking, and it's like if they slow it down. You know, the show has increased ratings since she came on. And and they, my point is that she really doesn't need that. If she wants to go wake up and do a show, she could do her own show. Isn't that right? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. That's what I thought. They say she signed a three year deal, but there is a clause that lets either party out of it if they're unhappy. So no. she uh, maybe she out. could drown the other members of the view. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, I drowned that whore Hasselback. <laughs> Not that she's a whore. I mean, I drowned her. Though. Uh, the drowning party said true. <laughs> but uh, the fact that she's a whore, uh, I deny. <laughs> George Lucas says he wants to give up making movies, and I agree. <laughs> About 30 years too late on that one. <laughs> I should have drowned him. <laughs> he says making movies is too risky these days. He'd like to concentrate on his more lucrative TV projects. So there you go. Yeah. After the last uh, Star Wars, I should have drowned him. <laughs> uh, Madonna. If I was George say, Lucas. Now I may drowning cool again. <laughs> uh, this is George Lucas. Uh, uh, instead of making movies, I'm going to spend the rest of my life coming on tits. <laughs> Don't you boys think that I may drown Ed Bull again? Yeah. Uh, up until um, the drowning of Mary Jo Kopechny, uh, I don't believe people liked to drown. It hadn't been cool since the Roman days. I'm bringing drowning back. Look now, you see even these young mothers drowning their children, driving their cars into uh, lakes. Uh, it's the way to do it. It's a pleasant way to go with your most prized possession, your car.
cop. A lot of women are Ted Kennedy in their kids. Who's going to you really wanted to do that? Huh? <laughs> yes, uh, it's become a thing now. Uh, you're going to Ted Kennedy your kids, right? <laughs> All the, the younger people are doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> Is Madonna starting a fight with Angelina Jolie? Wow, well, I'd like to drown both of them. <laughs> And all joking aside, and I, this is the last on the topic, and we'll get to Madonna. I made drowning cool once, and I can make it cool again. It's, uh, it's uh, getting popular in the black community. <laughs> this is uh, Ted Kennedy. Note to Brad Pitt. Load Angelina and those three kids in a car and with them. drown away. Oh, uh, accidentally, of course. I really thought the heart can't swim. Who would who would have thunk a three young boy Asian boy couldn't swim? <laughs> my, my best student was William Shatner. <laughs> oh, oh no! Stop that! No, Maddox, I know. Shahiro, Zahara, and Angelina. Well, I had nothing to do with it. I know. I know it was an accident. Uh, yeah. People like to speculate that their uh, error uh, was something, and there was. Right. I know. Don't worry. Oh uh, yeah, I was having an affair with Natalie Wood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, what else is in the news? I was just asking. Asking, do you think that Madonna wants to fight with Angelina Jolie? She yes. gave an interview to Time Magazine. It comes out today. She's asked about the yes. charges that she's jumping on the Angelina yes. bandwagon by yes. adopting. Uh, uh, yes. Angelina's Negroes are much better than Madonna. And, uh, They're fighting over whose kid is blacker. <laughs> she exploded. <laughs> Why don't they... <laughs> Why don't... And Why you're don't they explode. have their blacks fight it out? Yeah. <laughs> she said, How about no. a game of hoops? Uh, uh, which one adopted more what? niggas? Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> you had to keep oh, that. See, that's not funny. She said, that's not funny. And the floodgates the open. The floodgates have opened. She said, look, I could have joined the U.N. and become an ambassador and visited various countries and just kind of showed up and smiled and looked all concerned. But I'm not interested in going there like an amateur and being an idiot and going, okay, I'm going to build ten orphanages and I'll see you guys later. You use the uh, N-word as a satirical piece, I hope. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, yes. Of course. Right, right. I was making a statement about racism. She yeah. he, I think he was using it satirically last night during the Nick game as well. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing research. He wanted to see what it was like. How come you, what are you that, doing over uh, there? I'm trying to fix my Ted Kennedy. <laughs> How come that never happens on a Grandma Caprio call? <laughs> it's officially dead, Mike. Just like Capecni. <laughs> Hello, uh, Era. Uh, <laughs> Will you stop? Era, now let's uh, bring some decorum to the show. <laughs> so whose kids are darker? <laughs> Madonna's or Era? Uh, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And which Jolie. ones are blacker than not? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't mention Angelina by name, but what other celebrity is an ambassador to the UN who's famous for visiting various countries, and smiling for the cameras, and building orphanages? Uh, who has children that look like Yaf at Toto? <laughs> <laughs> My father was an ambassador. I don't know if you know that. Uh, Joseph Kennedy, senior. <laughs> Meanwhile, did you know Richard, I mean, Gilbert should get into this. Ricky Martin has adopted three Indian babies. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I heard those Indians can't swim. <laughs> he says he adopted them several years ago. India is very difficult to adopt in. Start he's swimming, never, Tonto. He's never been able to take these children home with him. They still live in India. Wow. He goes. Oh, yes, if they can swim, they said, How? <laughs> <laughs> he goes to visit them and he provides for all of their financial needs. He says, I see them all the time. But I'd love to visit them, but whenever go. I go, I get the shits. That's kind of a cool way to have kids, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like yeah, they're, they're on the other side of the continent. Yeah. You can't even take them home. They won't let you. I'd have a bunch of kids if they'd live in India. <laughs> I just a wife, too. Yeah. For you. Yeah, a wife and kids in India. Yeah, they live in India. <laughs> Daddy, I understand you're a homo. 
<laughs> also in the news, this weekend Saddam Hussein was sentenced to hang by the neck until dead yes. for crimes against Yay. humanity. Please don't kill him until he gives us a secret to taming those people. Saddam over. had an outburst in the court. Here's natural sound of Saddam cursing the court after his verdict was read. Number right. one. This is uh, pretty or his important. his sentencing was read. Number this one. This is historic. <laughs> God is greater. God is greater. God is greater. God is greater. Saddam Hussein with a bad stuttering problem. <laughs> My daddy sings La Vida Loca. <laughs> they were uh, going to hang me after Chappaquiddick, but... Uh... <laughs> They couldn't find a noose big enough to put over my large red head. <laughs> <laughs> President Bush says the conviction of the former Iraqi di uh, dictator is a step forward for Iraq. Number eight. The Sunni community in Iraq. Oh, number eight. Huh? That's number eight. No no way, hold it. Saddam Hussein's trial is a milestone in the Iraqi people's efforts to replace the rule of a tyrant with the rule of law. And it's a major... How many tyrants there are in the world that we don't do anything about? <laughs> hey. We like some of them. Yeah. I mean, come on. Here's the Iraqi Deputy Prime Minister, Baram Salih, who says that he hopes the country will be able to move on at this point. Number nine. I hope this verdict... Oh, yeah, they're moving on just beautifully. <laughs> Everything's going great. ...to closure a very tragic and brutal episode of Iraqi history. This guy will be lucky if he's alive next week. <laughs> <laughs> he's in hiding. Yeah. He did that from hiding. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the, uh, the whole country is in lockdown. They have imposed a curfew in order to try to stem any violence that might be... Um, now they're saying the Irish might even get more upset and want to kill us more if we kill Saddam Hussein. Right. They, that might I don't even understand that. They, they, they like him now. He's, like, popular again. Well, he does have his faction. Right. And they're the largest uh, part of the population, I think. think. They were thinking that it might get more violent once that verdict was announced, so they locked the whole country down. But people still took to the streets to party or protest or whatever they were doing. Meanwhile, the elections are still going on in this country, and they've gotten kind of ugly. Here is um, a bunch of different... And ads, the negative ads that have been used all around the country. Number 12. Provided by the taxpayers, a gas-guzzling luxury SUV. We even pay for his fuel. They took money out of employees' paychecks. Is that heavy? I don't know. It's all over the country. These people are, you know, just various people running ads against each other. Evacy hates retarded people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's just gotten so bitter the, and ugly. The <laughs> most vicious thing is, for me is that men, men, uh, Menendez, Menendez Kane Jr. battle over in Menendez Jersey. Menendez is a Hispanic. Do you want one of those running your government? <laughs> Vote. Kane Jr. Vote Kane Jr. <laughs> I'm Kane Jr. and I endorse this commercial. <laughs> Kane Jr. is the son of a wealthy governor, but did you know he murdered his parents? <laughs> Kane Jr., murderer, child molester. Did you know that Alan Hevesy eats young children? <laughs> Vote yes to Hevesy and yes to the blacks and homos taking over. <laughs> Do you want blacks and homos taking over? <laughs> then vote for well, Hevesy. There is one ad about Nancy Pelosi that basically says. Really? Well, Alan Hevesy attempted to rape Grandma Caprio. <laughs> Do you want him in New Jersey or anywhere near it? New Jersey and you, perfect together. <laughs> Are you endorse that commercial? <laughs> so why do all of these negative ads Hevesy, show up? Hevesy uh, pees on the homeless. At the end... Hevesy is for giving whores swimming lessons. <laughs> Andrew... Andrew Cuomo sold Artie heroin. <laughs> do you want him as your new attorney general? Here's Purdue University <laughs> professor Bird Rockman. Never says, see grunts in the gym. <laughs> he says negative ads have proven to be effective because few people independently <laughs> investigate candidates. A vote for Hevesy is a vote for heroin. You know, very important for typically, especially the least uh, informed 
elements of the population who usually tip the balance. Alan Hevesy goes to musicals. Need <laughs> I say more? Wink, wink. Uh, the gay agenda will be on his number one list if you vote for Alan Hevesy. Hev Hevesy has every copy of Doogie Howser on tape. <laughs> Alan Hevesy has a wooden carved owl in his rectum. <laughs> within, within weeks of Hevesy being elected, your oldest child will die of AIDS. <laughs> Elliot Spitzer called Gilbert Gottfried a dirty Jew. Now you're going to get him votes. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Robin? Yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Dick Cheney and the president have been out on the campaign trail, and of course they keep reminding us that we haven't been attacked in a long time. So here's Cheney on uh, this week. He says the Bush administration... What would focus... does Cheney have to say? The Bush administration would focus the remainder of its term on stopping terrorism. This is Dick Cheney, not Lon Cheney. Oh, yes. <laughs> Tell me what Cheney has to say. We need efforts to protect the nation from another attack. Today. We've gone over five years now without another attack on the U.S. That's a major success story. Right. And okay. he says they will keep that going. That role will be going if you reelect this president. Let's go to Steve. Say a quick hello, Steve. We're running out of time. Go ahead. Uh, Steve, you there? I know Steve. Ba 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Too bad he wanted to tell everyone how great ba, Gilbert's ba, ba, new ba, DVD is. Ba, 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 ba. And we can't. <laughs> now he's hello. You there? All right. That's a shame. He wanted to say how good the DVD I was, and he was really killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I drowned him <laughs> by uh, Alan Hevesy. Uh, someone was uh, going to say Gilbert's DVD was good, so I uh, drowned him. <laughs> Zach in Providence, Rhode Island. What is it? Boy accident. Going, hey, now. Uh, I got a question about the on-demand shows. Yes. Um, did you ever think about releasing them onto DVDs? No, because we have Howard TV, and then that's an exclusive thing, so. Yeah, well, I, I just figured because some shows don't always, uh, they don't stay on. So, I, I mean, if you, uh, once they're taken off. Yeah, well, right now it's uh, just the Howard TV thing, you know? Yeah, sure, I just... Uh, you right. guys. Good idea, though. Thanks, Zach. Yep. Robin, anything else? Yeah, we talked about that Ted Haggard earlier today. He's the disgraced evangelist who had to admit to some shortcomings and wound up being fired as the pastor of his whoa, church whoa, 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 and whoa. Uh, being thrown out as the head whoa, whoa, whoa. of an evangelical organization that represented 30 million people. His wife, Gail, has written a book... Uh, in which she advises people how to be married. Mm, that's a good idea. <laughs> in a chapter called Seeing Your Husband, Gail reflects on her experiences and discusses how to support your spouse, spouse through difficult times. She writes, we choose how we see our husbands. If for some reason he has become difficult to respect... She changed you the title to. of the book to uh, How to Be Married to a Homosexual. <laughs> you have to look for even the smallest <laughs> glimpse of an attribute that you can respect or love him for I and encourage that. that. Let's see how stick through the fact that her husband's a homo. Yeah. So, uh, I think we ought to be looking for the uh, Gail Haggard book on marriage. Well, my husband, let's see, i got to find something good about him. He's kind to men. <laughs> Mm, that's something positive. Anything else, Robin? Uh, Misha Barton has left the OC. Is that a good move for her? Uh, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I really don't have any. Hasn't idea. the OC left television? Yes. No, yeah. it's not on, but they are losing viewers. They, they yes. think it's the result of her not being on the show anymore. <laughs> the um, marathon, the New York marathon, was run yesterday, and um, a Hello. man from Brazil had the best time for the men. See. Si. Uh, Marilson Gomez Are Dos you the man Santos. from Brazil? <laughs> <laughs> and on the women's side it was a repeater from last year a Latvian woman That's Fred's country Yeah, right. All three of us Jelena Proko Those Latvians run fast because they chase the Jews The Jews are so fast that they, 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 there's actually no Jews left They're all extinct because, uh, in Latvia, they, they, they caught them all Well they tried hopping on trains, it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> So 
those were the two <laughs> winners, but the big news was Lance Armstrong yes. yesterday, and he did do it uh, 24 seconds under three hours, and he was uh, happy about that. Sounds nice. All right, Robin. Big hmm. movie of the week was Borat. Did you go see that, Gilbert? Very no. Good. Very good. Very funny movie. Sorry. Gilbert gets 26 jealous. million at the box <laughs> office. I, I still can't get over Artie at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> <laughs> Borat's number one yes. on the Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Here is Borat. A British guy's got the number one movie. Here is Borat discussing what he looks for in a woman. Two five. All right. Borat, the famous uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. I have tried uh, hard on the internet to meet the nice western girlies uh, for chit chat and sexy time uh, for preference ladies and ladies with the yellow hairs a plow experience and little or no history of retardation in family <laughs> <laughs> he's good uh, so there you go that's the kind of humor you got to try to achieve oh okay Gilbert. Now, Gilbert say something like that <laughs> or any other kind of humor for that matter the experts are astonished at his uh, performance yes. at the box office this weekend here's a box Box office analyst who says that it's astounding this debut for Borat. Number four. All right. Astounding. Dustin was wonderful. That's Will Ferrell. Oh, I see. <laughs> on the other page. On page one? It no. just says number four here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it probably page one. What's the guy's name, Paul? Paul. Uh, right. I think everyone was surprised by this performance of Borat. You know, considering the film was opened in fewer than a thousand theaters, and it, for it to top the box office with $26 million was just astounding. Yeah, so it's a funny, good movie. It's really uh And what seeing. you see here is instead of uh, people saying, oh, yeah, it was the number one everybody expected it, now it's a surprise and it makes news that it's number one. Yes. And yes. I guess there's going to be a kind of a Motley Crue movie, a Motley Crue biopic. Yeah, right. I always thought Fartman would do that kind of business, but uh, no one, uh, you know... Everyone, yeah, yeah everyone you gotta me, make it for it. To well, they, had, they, 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 I had the financing. I just, I got cold feet. I was like, you know, like uh, all the experts were saying, oh, you know, you gotta be careful, smart man, low brow. Meanwhile, look at Sasha Baron Cohen. Exactly. Molly Crew. Look, look at Artie. Yeah. Carnegie Hall. That's the thing. He's not considered lowbrow, I think, Sasha Baron. No, it's intelligent. By humor. critics, yeah. yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Fartman I mean, it would have been intelligent. It yeah. would have been done intelligently, yes. Farting can be tasteful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anything else, Robin? Vince Neal is here to talk about the biopic of the Motley Crue gang. He says Christopher Walken will play Ozzy Osbourne in the film. Number six. How, how's this? How's this? Confirmed as Ozzy Osbourne. Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken playing Ozzy Osbourne in my movie. Why the hell would they do that? I don't know. He also says Val Kilmer is set to play David Lee Roth. And, and Val Kilmer playing uh, 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 David Lee Roth. Stuff like that. Guys like that. We're doing big, giant cameos. With the Where's this movie? I have no idea. It's all in And I will I be think. their chauffeur. <laughs> I have an offer to play the fat Vince Neil. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's happening. All right. Thank you, Rob. we got to get going. I want to thank the great Gilbert Gottfried this Wednesday night at 730 and November 30th at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan. Do not miss this legendary <laughs> comic doing another legendary performance <laughs> at Caroline's. The, it is an intimate evening with Mr. Gilbert Godfrey. Also, to purchase Gilbert's DVD, Dirty Jokes, go to GilbertGodfrey.com. Good to see you, as always, Gilbert. Uh, yes, I'll be uh, there at Carnegie Hall. Yeah. <laughs> Artie, we'll see you Thursday night at Carnegie Hall. God damn it. I'm considering bringing a pool on stage and drowning a whore. <laughs> Arrow Island. <laughs> All right, I give up. Uh, let's, uh, let's say uh, goodbye. Adieu. Adieu. <laughs>